Hi, this is Dennis with CFO On The Go. So hey, we're going to take a quick, quick look here at Sage 100. Um, if you've been around for a while, it used to be called Master Builder, had been for probably 30 years, and they changed the name here about six months ago. So both the same product, just different name. So any accounting says, I know you're using QuickBooks now, can write checks and create invoices and write payroll checks and what have you, but uh, we do that, we do it better. Uh, but we do so much more, and that's where I want to spend most of my time. This is the tab. If I'm a project manager, this is where I clicked and started out my day. If I was a payroll person, my screen would look like this. But this is where we had a lot of features and, and benefits. So if I'm a project manager and I want to look at change orders, or I want to create a purchase order, or I just want to see what's going on with the job, and it's just a mouse click. And I'm, so I'm going to pull up a, a job that I already have open here. So hang on a second. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but we collect so much information here. And, and you can pause this screen, obviously. It's a, just a video, so you can pause it if you want to look at more, all these fields. But, you know, we track them in different statuses. Uh, we can track different types of work uh, so that you can get profitability reports by type of work, whether it's tilt-up, TI work, medical, dental, whatever you want. You can classify to different kinds of work uh, and then find profitability by that. But here's what I wanted to show you down here across the bottom. So I'm on job number two. Uh, and if I want to see what I bid on that job, these are my bid items and what I bid on those items. OK. This is uh, this is my phases. If I have multiple phases like the floors of a building or buildings, multiple buildings in an office complex. Here's my budget for this job by Costco. Here are all the purchase orders that I've written for this job. And if I want to see one of these, I want to go look at this one. Well, let's go find a big one here, right here. If I want to see how what this purchase order was for, these are all the items that are on the purchase order for this job. Close that real quick. Same thing for subcontracts. If I want to look at change orders and I want to see what this change order is all about, again, it's a double click. This is a change order for his additional tile work. They approved 21000 My sub gave me a price of 15000 uh, it's still open. It hasn't been approved yet, but it's still open. So if it was approved, it would say approved here. So that's that. And then payments and then a contract summary. So all of your contacts for this job can be on the here. Any important dates that you want to track for this job can be tracked here. So a lot more than you can track in QuickBooks because you can just set up a job in QuickBooks, but everything about that job is right there on that one screen. So... Um, one of the other things I want to show you while I'm here is a couple of things. One is, um, you know, you guys were looking for real-time cost. Um, we'll look at this one real quick here. Um, this is a committed cost report. And so today in QuickBooks, you know, you have cost codes. You call them items. We call them cost codes. You have budget, uh, and these are the budget with approved change orders. Uh, this is the cost that's gone through the system so far, whether it be from vendors or from your employees or um, when you're, that's probably all you would have. You could have equipment costs if you have lots of equipment. Uh, but the nice part is we we take it one step further because all you can see today. And if you look at line 60, let's look at 6100. No, actually look at line 4000 here. Um, you have a fifteen hundred dollar budget and you haven't spent anything yet. So you, you kind of think that you're in pretty good shape. The bottom line is, is you're not because somebody wrote a subcontract to do that item of work for 11500 So um, this item should have been bid, but estimated for a lot more than 1500 because we had to go find somebody to do it now, and it's going to cost us 11500 So um, we now know we have a $10,000 uh, unfavorable variance on that budget. But see, in QuickBooks, you wouldn't know about that until this invoice shows up from that subcontractor, which could be a month or two after he does the work. And so we could kind of tell you as you're writing those commitments where you stand. And last thing while I'm sitting on here, um, I see I spent 35000 on the item that I budgeted $4 for it. Not good. Uh, but I can drill right back and see where I spent that money. And again, I can drill back one more time to see the actual invoices. But I can see here's how I spent $35,000. And I go, wait. This $25,000 doesn't go to this item. That was for something else, and I can actually move that uh, to the item it's supposed to be put on. So real-time cost, 
not only real time, but also impending future costs are going to be shown on the reports as well, which I think is a great idea. So let me close that. Um, on the project management side, again, that's where we're going to add a lot of value for you guys. RFIs, transmittals, uh, submittals, daily field reports, hours to complete, cost to complete, which I'm going to open up in a second, uh, and then your job status report and over under billion reports. That's just some of the reports. I only have three reports on here. Uh, in the system, there's 1,400 plus uh, reports. There's 130 plus reports just for job cost. So you will find one you like, I promise you. But um, you guys were looking for projections, so um, I'm going to bring up a job here, job number two. So these are your items of work. This is the budget that you said that it was going to take to perform that work. And this is the cost that's come through the system, okay? Hard dollar cost. This is just a math. This is just saying that I spent 109% of this item, okay? Because I spent 3300 versus my $3,000 budget. But in actuality, I can't be 109% complete, actually, right? It can only be 100% complete. So these items are complete. This is my over or under for my budget. Uh, if I come down a little ways, uh, so let's take this item right here. I have a $4,000 budget, $2,700 in cost. The system says I'm 64% complete, but this happens to be, let's just make this a good item for a change. So when I go out and measure my quantities and look at it, I'm really 80% complete. So I'm going to put 80% in there, uh, recalculate that. It now shows me that I'm going to be, based on that, I'm going to be $770, give or take, under budget. If I was really only 40% complete on my measured quantities, then it's projecting out a $2,500 additional uh, above my budget. And this may cost to remain. So great way to do cost to complete analysis. Again, I don't know how much work you self-perform. Uh, but in that, uh, I want to just go open this up real quick here. Hang on a second. Um, if there are items that you do yourself, and everybody does something themselves. Uh, they, so, uh, I don't like, hang on a second. So, these are the items that you have that you self perform, for an example. This was my budget. This is how many units I had to do. And we don't care what the units are, they could be square feet, square yards, each lump sum. Uh, doesn't make a difference, as long as you can measure it. This is the cost that's come through the system. So, again, just like we put in percent before. We actually put in the units that are completed, and I, I'm just going to give you an example here. So on this first one, I budgeted $86 a unit. I'm spending $137 a unit. I'm over by 50. I have one left. This is my cost to complete, and that's how much I'm going to be over budget. So if you're just a dollar guy, you use the one I showed a couple minutes ago. If you do things yourself, this provides phenomenal information for you to bid the next job because if you do three jobs in a row, and your estimator's bid in 86 and it's costing you 137, uh, you need to go talk to your estimator, you gotta go talk to the project guy, but somebody, these two guys are not on the same page. But this is gonna provide you information to make that es next estimate even better. So I'm gonna finish there. Um, one of the things, questions you had here was accounting integrates with project management and vice versa. Um, you put something in accounts payable, it's going to impact the job cost. If you put in a change order and have it approved, it's going to increase the budget for the cost of that change order and increase the contract value for the value of that change order to the owner. So everything's tied together. It's all one tight integrated system. Uh, I'm going to close some of those up because I do want to show you this real quick because it's kind of, kind of fun actually. So if I just type in job cost because I'm new to the system, kind of like you would be, I'm looking for a job cost report. But you know what? I know I want the job cost report, and I only want it if it has something to do with project management. This is going to be a little bit smaller list. So there's 75 reports that are job cost based. So budget, bonding report, over and under billing report, job cost totals by, by job, by type, uh, my list of subcontractors. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. Easy to use. Once you figure it out, it's pretty easy. But if I'm looking for a list of subcontractors and I want it listed by vendor with the details, there it is. This is the job. This is my um, subcontractor. These are the jobs he's on, and these are the values of his subcontract as of this minute. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, everything's in the system. Sometimes it's a little hard to find it when you first start using it, but 
with those filters, you can get pretty close to what you're looking for pretty quickly. Um, I'm trying to look here. So one of your questions is, can I run this on an iPad? This does not run it on an iPad natively. But what I'm doing right now is uh, this uh, Sage 100 happens to be sitting on a server in Poway, um, not in our office. Uh, we actually shut our server down about a month and a half ago, I think. And so this is a company that actually has a server farm. And I have one in Arizona that we like as well. And so they would take the software that you own, put it on their server, uh, host it for you. There's a fee per month for doing that. But the bottom line is when they're doing it, they've got it set up and configured through Citrix and a few other things that they do. I can run this on an iPad, uh, an Android device, uh, netbook, laptop, just about anything. Uh, iPhone, tough, uh, only because the screen's too small to really see anything. And then it's way too much scrolling if you put it on an iPhone. So, But on an iPad, it works absolutely fine. And they, and they, I'm an iPad. I am not an Apple person. I haven't been. I obviously own an iPad. But, you know, there's no mouse. And I'm so used to driving with a mouse that they actually fix that for you. And they actually provide a mouse on the iPad that you can use. And so uh, it's just a little toolbar you pull down and it allows you to use your finger as a mouse, which is uh, pretty slick. Anyway, I cover most of the things. Um, I think this platform is pretty easy to use, uh, especially once you get these configured. Um, there's a button here, um, you know, I can move things around, you know, I'm going to move this back to where it belongs, move this over here. But if I wanted to grab another report from over here, I can grab another report and put it here. So this desktop for each individual becomes customized so that only the things that they do are sitting on that, um, I'm going to save this real quick, on their desktop. So if I'm uh, in accounts payable, what do I do every day? Set up new vendors process purchase orders, enter invoices as they come in the mail. Uh, once a week or once a, every two weeks, I select invoices to pay and I write the checks. What reports do I need? I need an AP aging and I want a committed cost report. So these are the reports that I use. If I'm in um, estimating and scheduling, these are all my estimating items and my scheduling items. And so um, there's a lot to the system. I'm only covering some of the things uh, that you had on your list, but uh, on Thursday, when we get together, we can get into a lot more. So uh, may want to just freeze this thing uh, before Thursday and look at these menu options here and see which ones you want to drive, jump into. Uh, we do do progress billings in the AIA format. We do do T&M billings. Uh, lots of stuff we can do with you on jobs. Uh, document control, uh, RFIs, transmittals. So anyway, take a look at this stuff. When we get together on Thursday, Bring your questions and we'll really dive deep into this thing so you can see if it'll work for you. Anyway, thanks for your time. Have a great day.